Hi, my name's Johnny, and today we are taking a look at the Metro Express Hybrid PJ from Sad Al Sky. I know it's pronounced Sadowski. Now, everyone that commented in the comment section saying that I said it wrong looks really, really silly. This is the first Sadowski that we've had on the channel. I've been super excited to check one out because people have been raving about them. What better way than checking out the Metro Express line? Because these currently come in at around £425. What's really nice about this range is that they come in a whole range of colours, fretboards, left-handed, right-handed, fretless, fretted. Right here we have the PJ in this kind of vintage white. It's got this nice kind of off-white tint to it and it just looks so good. When I got this out of the box, I was just like enamored with how good this base looks. The roasted maple neck and fretboard. Look at these knobs, beautiful, beautiful knobs. We love a beautiful knob on this channel. Before we have a listen to this and check out the specs, I will start by saying that Sadowski have sent me this base to check out today. Therefore, this does technically class as an ad, but I'm just gonna give my honest opinions. I don't accept any money uh, to say anything about bases. Um, and yeah, dying off at the top of the headstock, they have upgraded to the Sadowski logo. This looks a lot better than the original Metro Express line that didn't have this logo here. I love this headstock. I think it's great. Turning it over, we can see these kind of hip shot ultra light style tuners. See up here, it says it is made in China. I feel like a lot of base manufacturers are doing that nowadays, moving things over to China rather than Indonesia. We've got the benefits of a three string string tree, string tree, <laughs> string, three string, string tree, God, gives you a little bit more tension on that A string and just a little bit more of a break angle between the nut and the string tree. Really like this. One other thing that is cool about this bass that you do not get in other bases this price point is an adjustable nut. You can see here the two little holes that you can get your tool in there and raise and lower the nut, which is amazing, honestly. For this price point to offer something like that, I think is really, really cool. And I can't think of another base that offers that. The neck is like a satin finish on the back. And you know me, I, I absolutely love that. It feels really, really nice in your hands. As we move up the fretboard, we can see Sadowski's invisible fret technology. Board, so it means that you kind of get this smooth feeling uh, when you move up and down. Um, or that's what it should be. I'm gonna say it, this has probably the worst fret job of a base at this price point I've played in a long time. Like, they boast about this technology, but this one feels horrible. Like, I like that's the first thing I notice out of the box. You know when you're on the highway or the motorway and you go over the little bumps and it's like bang, 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 bang. That's how I that's how I feel when moving up the fretboard of this base. Now they're not sharp, they've done a good job there, but they are poking out like like every single one consistently. And it's noticeable when you go from playing this to another kind of standard fret job bass. So perhaps this is an anomaly. When you're getting basses mass produced in China and Indonesia, you are more likely to get lemons or get ones that aren't quite right. That's one of the negative things about mass production and slightly lacking quality control. So I I'm gonna put this down to that. But yeah, not good on this model in particular. And that, that's a real shame. And what's also a real shame is that you haven't yet liked this video or subscribed. So you better go and do that right now. Let's just, just take, this, take this stupid camera off of here a second and, and, and appreciate how like, oh my God, how 
beautiful this fretboard is. I don't know if you can see this. Who knows, but oh my god. It's nice that it likes. <laughs> Moving past the fretboard though, we have got the truss rod adjustment via a wheel down the bottom for a £429 base. That's an excellent feature and I love seeing that on affordable bases. Let's, should we just make that a thing now, industry? Should we get rid of the truss rod adjustment here and have it at a wheel down the bottom? Cool, thanks. Then we move up to our electronics where we've got a classic PJ configuration, but of course this is kind of in a jazz bass body. So if you're looking for that Aerodyne thing with a PJ and a jazz bass, this really might be your cup of tea because not many companies offer this kind of configuration with this shape. Then we have our control plate here. And as I alluded to earlier, love these knobs, man, they feel like such nice quality. In fact, they might be the best feeling knobs uh, I felt of a base at this price point. I'm also a big fan of the kind of medium mass style bridge. And then the input feels really nice quality as well. I think they've definitely gone all out on the hardware of this base to really make it a more premium offer compared to some more standard models that you might get from other brands. Back to our control plate though, we have a master volume, a pickup blend with a little notch in the middle, and then active bass and treble controls. And yes, it does have a passive mode too. If you pull up the third knob, it is a push-pull to turn it into passive mode. The battery is stored in this control plate on the back, and Sadowski kind of boasts that it's really easy to get to, and it's super quick to change a battery. Well, other bases, I can do it with one hand with the compartment. This one... I take the plate off and then... Oh, we just got like all the exposed electronics and then the little battery compartment here and that goes in. I don't, I don't know. It's a small thing, but it feels a bit clunky and like, now I've got this and like, oh, this is all exposed. I don't know. I, I think it's better if we just had like a separate battery compartment that we could do that with, but small grumble. What isn't a grumble though is the copper shielding within. Look at that. That is lovely stuff. So you're not going to be getting any unwanted hum or noise from this base. Now, one thing I do really like is that when everything is full, everything is facing kind of this direction, apart from the blend control. An apparent deliberate decision on this base was to swap rounds the way that you change between the pickups. So on a traditional base, turning it all the way clockwise would be the neck both pickups and then the bridge because that makes makes sense apparently the guy who runs Sadowski prefers this to be the other way around an interesting design choice which <laughs> let me know in a comment down below if you find that useful because when I was first playing this bass I was so confused but you know it might all be worth it this bass sounds really good so let's have a listen to what this thing can do. We're gonna be hearing this as just the clean DI and also using an amp sim through the HX stomp with the Galleon Kruger head and the Ampeg SVT 8x10 cap. Let's have a listen. Thank mm -hmm. you. 
So there we go, let me know what you think about the sound of this bass in the comments down below. Now I really do believe that this kind of price point is where preamps start getting good in affordable basses. This preamp sounds fantastic, I think. When I changed it over from passive to active, it just felt like I was going through an amp all of a sudden. It sounds quite premium, I think, and uh, yeah, really great. I definitely think the strong point of the sound of this bass is when it's in active mode uh, with both pickups on. It is a bit of a shame that there's no passive tone control on here, but again, not really a super common feature at this price point. So there we have it. I really, really love this bass. Whoa, 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 whoa. Stop right there, stop. <laughs> uh, because there are a few more things to say about this bass. I have had this bass around for a couple of weeks now and I quite like doing that because it shows how the bass sits, how it compares to straight out of the box so a couple of weeks later and I'm really glad that I did that with this bass. This bass plays really, really nicely. Out of the box, sounded great too. Leave it a couple of weeks and the setup on this bass had just disappeared. The, the fret buzz is quite bad when you leave it for a couple of days, so... Ah. Now I found the key to this bass is this adjustable nut here. Raise that up slightly, really help to fix up some of that fret buzz. Someone that's a beginner getting this bass, I think you're gonna have problems as you're gonna be less likely to know what you're doing in terms of the setup. Perhaps if you're a guitar player looking for a bass or you're looking to get a second bass and you know, and you know your way around a little bit more, I think this can be a great option because once you know what you're doing, you're able to get the best out of this bass. So there we go. A bit of mixed thoughts about this one. I think it's got all the recipe points for an amazing bass and in the right hands, can be a brilliant, brilliant instrument. But that's what I think. Let me know what you think in the comments down below. Once again, thank you so much for watching. I'll see you next time.